This week on the Ritual Misery Program podcast thing. We, we never figured that out, did we? I played a lot of Factorio because it's the only thing I feel like I can accomplish this week. That's right. Depression for the win. Um, speaking of depressing, I put up Christmas decorations this uh, weekend. Oh, I hate I we we've been doing that slowly over the last like 20 years, I think. It just takes forever. Uh, the Mandalorian, the latest episode, if you haven't seen it, as Jackie would say, oh my god, you got to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I had a 30 minute boner. Uh is that a long time for you? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Virtual Misery Podcast, episode 266 for Thursday, the 10th of December, 2020. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests, when they appear, celebrate all things geek. Uh, I'm Amos, that's Kent. We didn't actually invite a guest this week, so I, I'm... Don't think I'm throwing shade anywhere, but I might be. Someone out there is probably like, I wish I could be on Virtual Misery. And we like totally didn't invite him. So now I'm, I'm <laughs> it's just been that kind of week, man. Uh, how you doing, dude? Um, All right. I'm good. It's Thursday. I'm here. It's great. <laughs> it's been it's been that kind of week. I'm, I'm going to like I said in the intro, man, I just been in a slump. Like it's not even I wouldn't even call it a depression. It's just been a uh, it's been. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, man. Just kind of a. It's a valley. It's a valley. This yeah. Been a valley. It's yeah. It, it's yeah. like it's like the the post Thanksgiving hangover has just continued, oh. and it's not the holiday season in my mind yet because like mm -hmm. the twins come home next week from from college uh, on Wednesday, so you know like when we got Richard Gunther uh, the week after that on the twenty third, we're doing a Wednesday show, um, like. I just have so many things I'm excited for in the next couple weeks that this week has just been hard to get out of bed every day. Plus, my wife's been doing her uh, senior enlisted joint PME so she can apply for a chief job. And she's been up late every night doing that. So I've been trying to stay out of her way. If I'm in the room, I'll distract her and we'll start talking about other stuff. She won't get it done. So I've been staying down here in my office or upstairs on, on my gaming computer. And... Yeah. Um, yeah, when you're playing Factorio until three in the morning because you don't want to engage your brain anymore now, so you're ready to go to sleep at the drop of a hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got to get up at eight to get babies ready for school. Is it's just been kind of a a lull mm -hmm. week. Yeah, uh, you mentioned PME. I do not miss that. Uh, no. For those non-military types, it's professional military education. It's about being a better leader. It's and, not. Good lord. <laughs> It is dry and boring and oh and, and this one is one of those where you can't skip to the next slide until they've read everything. Like there's no way to skip past it. Mm. So she basically yeah. sits there with her headphones and just half dozes off waiting for it to end so she can try to take the test at the end. Um and it's like if you fail a module, it just makes you redo it again. So it's like you get unlimited tries, as much time as you want to waste listening to it you know <laughs> right uh yeah it's been yeah it's not fun jeez and they don't yeah. present things in a way that is actually applicable to your job like i'm sure there's some fucking rainbows and unicorn job out there in the air force where all of this stuff applies to a t perfectly it's never applied to any of the jobs that i've ever done in more than like five percent of the way yeah, well, we're we're maintainers, dude. Like th this is totally geared for the nonner. Um, but it nonner, didn't apply to her uh, shit either, and she's P she's MPF. Really? Like, she is the nonner, yes. right? The nonner, right? Like, capital. Like like the only people more nonner than MPF are are finance. You know, and that's debatable even. <laughs> no. <laughs> because yeah. people, like, if, if your finance shit is fucked up, like, well. You're, you know, you're not getting paid. Like, you're messing with my money. If your NPF stuff is messed up, like, okay, like, you didn't count a ribbon that I had or something. Like, okay, whatever. Like, NPF is the, no that's way more nonner, in my opinion, than finance. Uh, I guess we'll have to agree to disagree because this is a conversation <laughs> that, could, that could take an entire show in and of itself. Um <sighs> 
Yeah, there there's been there have been exactly two comptrollers, finance people that mm-hmm. I've ever even tolerated. Now, I loved both of them. They were both amazing, but not enough to compensate for all the drudgery and shit that is elsewhere in the finance world. However, I've had plenty of opportunities and taken it up on plenty of opportunities to actually enjoy myself having a few drinks with some MPF folks. And I can tell you they are a far better, more maintenance-like crowd once you get them away from their fucking desk jockey position. Yeah, I've never hung out with a comptroller. And I'm okay with that. They're the worst. (laughs) <laughs> the worst dude's gone wild in the chat says mpf is greater than finance yep um, mpf will actually yeah. talk to you as a person once once you get an appointment and you get all your paperwork and you sit in queue for three hours they'll still talk to you finance you're talking to the lowest ranking airman in that fucking office no matter which office you go to and they don't know shit and every three words coming out of your mouth they got to run back to some fucking o in the back to ask a stupid goddamn question to come up and tell you that they don't know either they'll have to research and get it back with you and of course they never fucking do because officers suck <laughs> All right, hot military takes on the Ritual Misery podcast. There you go. We, um, we, we did our military part, our veterans do, part of the uh, do you, uh, mission Do you have your Christmas decorations up yet? Uh, we're waiting until next weekend to put the tree up because the twins will be here. Um, but we do uh, have lights in the front. We got you know the little window decoration things going. We don't have our Mickey Mouse timer in the backyard yet. Uh, so we're, we're kind of like halfway there. Yeah, well, that's kind of where we're at too. We've we've got the tree up. Mm. Um, lights are hung on the roof, but they're not plugged in yet. Uh, yeah, so like the other decor is like half out, um, half still in the box. Yeah. So yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. All all of the so the twins are going to be staying in the guest room when they get here. All of the Christmas decorations are currently in the guest room because that's our staging area for pretty much anything that we do. Or if you're taking a trip, that's where all your mm-hmm. where your luggage goes to get packed, you know. So we have to clean out that room for them to get be for them to arrive on Wednesday. So we have to ha- either put the decorations back in the garage, which no one wants to do, or put right. them up before they arrive. So this weekend is going to be a massive Christmas decoration spree. I'm gonna hate it. Yeah, yeah, it's not one of my favorite activities. Um... I, I just don't uh, like Christmas, man. I'm just not, I'm not, I didn't have great Christmases growing up, so it's not like a cherished thing to me. Uh, yeah, see, I'm, I'm in a weird place because I, I loved Christmas when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I, I loved Christmas when I had small children. Yeah. Uh, it's just lost its spark for me. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping, like, I don't want to be the Scrooge. Um, I find myself being Scrooge-like in the last several years and i'm trying to get out of that funk i'm trying to yeah. like recapture that that like christmas magic that and energy yes yeah. yes i yeah. so uh, last Chris, i will say last christmas uh, i got a surprise gift from my sister-in-law my uh, uh gloomhaven that i still haven't played hopefully i'm going to be able to play while the twins are here i got a surprise gift from her i didn't get a present from anyone else so it wasn't the gift giving thing but that was a nice surprise that you know she she did, went out of her way to do that mm-hmm Autumn, it was seven. She's eight now, but she was seven last year and really enjoyed Christmas. Like she, she has her own technique for unwrapping paper now. <laughs> you know, she's like, a, it, it, when they're little, it's cute, but it's not fun, in my opinion. She's at the <laughs> age now where it's getting to be fun. Like she's, she has a list of things that she wants. She has certain things, you know, not just, I want everything like Evelyn is right now. She's five. So she just wants all, like you hand her a, a, a Toys R Us pamphlet rest in peace yeah and she would just literally circle the pamphlet you know right you, you wouldn't yeah. even have to open it she just wants all the things autumn wants certain things so she tries to guess what it is she shakes it she's at that age and that is a lot of fun and that's mm-hmm. the age where amber and ashley were when i really enjoyed christmas with them too mm-hmm. um so yeah that's that's kind of where we're I'm, I'm getting back into it a little bit but that's all christmas day stuff that's not preparation and you know, the seasonal stuff. And I'm not, I'm right. not Christian. So I'm not, I don't give a shit about the spirituality aspect of it. You know, right, even right. my pagan side is like, yeah, you'll whatever. Like it's no, you know, I just, 
I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not the Scrooge, but I'm very humbug. Yeah, you know, and and the thing is, because it's it's a season of giving, right? And I enjoy giving. It's it's that it when you have a list, you've got all of these people and all of these things, and it becomes just a tasker, like like in the military, right? It's a it's a tasker now. It's not. Hey, have fun, like, you know, finding things that, that you want to give to people. It's, you now have a tasker and you have two weeks to accomplish it, you know, or three, you know, however much yeah. time you give yourself. Yeah. And it's like, fuck me. And then it's stressful. And then you're like, well, shit, this was supposed to be here on the 20th, but now it says it's going to be three weeks to the, ah, oh, now I got it. You know, and it's like, oh my God. Uh, I, I stand, uh. I stand by that if you, <clears throat> If you are generally shopping for people, like certain people want certain things, that's fine. Mm. That's fine. If you're generally shopping for people, white elephant, you don't know what to get them, but you want to get them something decent, but you don't want to spend a lot of money on it. If you're not prime day shopping, you're fucking doing it wrong. <sighs> that's all prime day is a bunch of shit that, you think someone might want, but you don't want to spend a bunch of money on it, so you get it for 40% off. Yeah, Black, no, see, Black Friday I, that, shopping is shopping for yourself. <laughs> see, all of those things, like, th th those are, like, trash things for me. Like, I feel like I'm setting money on fire. If I look at something, oh, that's on sale, I I will buy that. No, fuck that. That's what wish lists are for. Like, if you already know you want a thing... Then you put it on a wish list, and then you get a little notifier saying, "Like, oh, hey, it's on sale right now. Do you want to purchase it now?" Right, but that's oh, for yes. yourself. Yes, I will. That's for yourself. That, like I said, not for anyone. Like, I. So you have a wish list of things that you want to buy for other people. Um, some yes. Oh, okay. Well, we all. But, we... but the but the thing the thing about it is like if I like so you you talk about Prime Day, right? Mm -hmm. If I bought something for somebody on Prime Day, I want to give it to them now, not mm -hmm. December twenty fifth. No, uh, we did, I would say we did for, not for the littles, not for Autumn and Evelyn, you know, cause we had to coordinate with Santa and stuff, but, oh, sure, of course. um, uh, which anyway, Santa, <clears throat> most of the gifts that we got, the middles or the bigs, depending on how we feel that day, uh, <laughs> If we're only talking about the littles versus the the middles, it's littles and bigs. But if we're talking about the whole family, it's littles, middles, and bigs. So right. anyway, yeah, we we got the middles. Almost all of like ninety percent of what we got them, we got on Prime Day. Prime Day. Yeah, uh -huh. they had they had wish lists. We didn't always get them exactly what was on their wish list. Uh, my wife buys stuff that she thinks well, you know, because she talks to them all the time. And so she'll be like, oh, they could use this. They could use that, blah, 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 blah. I look at stuff. She's, she asked me anything that hasn't having to do with electricity. She asked me, hey, is this a good thing? And <laughs> right. invariably, I upgrade it. Like, yeah, that's nice, but we should go with this one because it's nicer and it's more worth the money. You know, like it's she knows it's going to happen. She sends me trash on purpose. And then, I, <laughs> then, then three hours later, I've researched the actual thing that they were looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I have to troubleshoot it. I'm not troubleshooting garbage. If it's garbage and they and it breaks, I'm not. I'm, I'm putting it in the trash and calling it a day. Like you know, it's got to be worth <laughs> yeah. my while to fix. If you want, anyway. So that's that's uh, that's Christmas. Yeah. So far. So something that does bring me joy though is the Mandalorian oh week my God. after week. This week's episode, or I guess last week's episode, technically, uh, man. It's a it's roughly a thirty minute episode. I was excited from the moment that the previously on little thing happened. Yeah, uh, which was a, a little snippet from season one, which was kind of a foreshadowing thing. When I knew it at the time, I, I knew exactly what was going to happen this episode, and I got excited. It just started like like I was making noise and moving. Um, in ways that you know you don't normally do when you're just sitting there watching a television show, and um, man, and and the grin did not leave my face for 30 minutes. Like I was 
just did excited. You, did you have any spoilerage on this episode? No. None okay. whatsoever. Okay. I have okay. not received a single spoiler this entire season so so far. Knockout. Knock I on someone had mentioned a certain ship appearing in this episode. Oh no, no. Oh. But they didn't okay. say anything about the occupants of that ship or destination. Yeah. Like only the that name, the name of that ship, which is one. If you are even half ass into Star Wars like you I know. am, you know that fucking ship. Yeah, um, yeah. and uh so that i was like what the fuck you know especially with my timing like i in my mind i haven't quite placed this series in the canon movie timeline like i know it's five years after return of the jedi right i know i know that mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. in my mind when i'm watching the show it's still not quite placed like there's a uh, cogn- a cognitive dissonance with the perceptive understanding you know what i mean like okay. it doesn't the the show doesn't feel like it's five years after jedi what, does, it, does it feel like it's in a particular time frame or, or does it just feel like it's it's like just off on its own somewhere no it, it definitely feels uh original era original okay. trilogy era like it has that feeling but sometimes i feel like it's just before empire sometimes it feels feel like it's in between empire and jedi you know, okay. like it, it's it's in that time. It's definitely not before uh, New Hope. You know, like it's it doesn't have that feel at all. But, and I I don't I don't know. I like again cognitively, I understand it is five years post. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't. When I'm watching it, it, it hasn't placed yet. Mm. This episode placed it. I got you. Okay, so because I yeah yeah believe it or not, I was going somewhere with that. <laughs> because because I have watched all of the animated series and whatnot, and I'm, I'm so zeroed in on something like Mandalorian history that's been revealed to us in in the animated series and things. Right. Um, it's like I, I never had that cognitive dissonance. Like right. I know exactly where we are now, in this in timeline. This character, this uh, Mandalorian. What do we know his name yet? Um, the the main character of the Mandalorian, yeah, yes, Din Djarin. It was revealed at the end of of the first season. Okay, okay, Din Djarin. Okay, um, yep. So, Din is a new character for this show, right? Like he has not been mentioned in previous anything canon. Correct. Okay, yep. brand new, brand new. Okay, I, that's what I thought because they keep bringing characters up from other properties. Yeah, no, Din Djarin's brand new, and and Grogu. Is brand new. right, right, yeah. Well, yeah, because that was the big surprise at the episode, uh, season one, episode one. Mm-hmm. Um, which Richard and I both almost fucking fell out of our chairs when that happened. <laughs> but again, at the time, we hadn't, we hadn't placed, you know, time wise, we hadn't placed it. So we're, there really isn't a lot in that first episode to place it. I mean, you you know, it's obviously post Mandalorian rebellion or wars or whatever that was. But you don't know anything really other than that in that first episode. This kind of yeah, really you know that the empire vague. was defeated already. You know it's post Return of the Jedi. That's really all you know it, by the clues that are given uh, in the episode. Well, you would know that someone who understands. No, 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 I mean it's no. They, they yeah. there's. I just watched this the other day. There's literally a line that says the empire is defeated. That currency isn't good. Yes. Yes, you are correct. How many, this is probably just me overthinking it, but how many <laughs> entities in Star Wars universe have been called the Empire? No, 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 stop that. Don't don't be pedantic about this. There's one fucking Empire. There's the Empire. Capital E, the Empire. Right. There's been one. Right. The Empire. Okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, yes, I know. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that if you're just kind of, um, you know, you're not not pouring over every word said by every character that it would be easily overlooked. Right. Not an important line. Right. But either way, (laughs) the, the, the point of the, well, kind of the point of what I was saying is you can't prove a negative. So there's no way to say that there was nothing ever empire 
other than the, what we know as the empire. Like it oh, could have been sure, a, a local I mean, empire or something like that. But anyway, um, the entire Star Wars franchise talks about the empire, and we know which empire. Right. They're not going to just randomly drop the empire, but somehow you should know that they mean a different empire. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, any, any, go ahead. What were you saying? I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. This one was a bit different than previous. And if you listen to Cord Killers, then in the post show last week, I guess. Yeah, last week, Brian said something he thought was going to happen in season three. And that'd probably be the end of it once that was, that particular situation was resolved. And that particular situation was capped off in this episode. Oh, interesting. So I've got, I've got, um, I've got theories as well, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to reveal them here because it's going to get spoilery. Right. Um, I just want, I want well, I, this... I, I mentioned that because it's in spoiler in time. So you're already into spoilering if you know what I'm talking about. So I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not spoiling it for people yeah. that aren't into spoilers. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just want to say uh, uh, about this episode, uh, the, the, the character that you've, you've been alluding to, um, was my favorite character as a child. Um, right. The action figure, like if you look at my, because I somewhere in a box in the garage or something, you can find my old Star Wars action figures. And uh, the one that the the paint is the most worn on the plastic figure is obviously the one that's most played with, and it's this character. Right. Uh, it was... And I think that's the case with a lot of kids our age yeah like there's it, something it about that great... character that resonated ah oh, man so good so all right good. um else, you know what else is so good what's that our patrons our no patrons are, so good. are you serious they're great man right. i i cannot say enough good things about I, them they're absolutely i'm wonderful. going to argue with you right here Oh God! All right, you you hate the patrons. No, I knew it again. You're doing it wrong. I you you <laughs> you called them wonderful and great, and I I I think you're underselling it, dude. Oh, <coughs> okay. Like, choked me up there. I uh, I was so astonished that I just like inhaled I, all the saliva in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I I think they're they're the fucking best. Oh, like, the be oh, so not they're not like great or or better than most. They're the best, right? Like that. That's that's where I think you're getting it wrong. You're you're like giving them an A, but they need like they need like the A plus plus, man. Man, they're great. Patreon, which, which is which is way different than the C plus plus. Don't give them the C plus plus. No, that's outdated. It's... No, no, be up to date and go to <laughs> patreoncom slash misery. And be A plus plus. <laughs> Why should they go there, Amos? What what what's the incentive for them to be one of the A plus plus people? Uh, sometimes I release shows early there. Uh, sometimes we we release extra stuff that you can only get there. Sometimes we uh, put stuff on there that you literally cannot find anywhere else unless you hack into one of our houses, which is <laughs> it's easier just to be a, become a patron to get that shit, man. It's like, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and plus it, it, it supports this very show. That's uh, true. That's and, and if you think about it this way, dude, like everybody has a laptop, every laptop needs a sticker. You don't have a sticker pop in at like the $10 level for three months. We send you a fucking sticker, man. That's how that works. Like this, just like there's all that. Kinds, yeah, there's all kinds of levels with all kinds of rewards there. Mm. Uh, just go check it out for yourself. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. What if you're cold? Like it's wintertime. You're cold. You want a fucking hoodie. You want a Ritual Misery hoodie. I'm, I've been eyeballing those hoodies, dude. Like those are nice. Those are nice hoodies. Like you can, you can go to the swag store at RitualMisery.com mm. and pick up some swag. Which would be awesome. Or you can just become a patron at the appropriate level. And after three months, we'll send you one. Dude, I might have to become a patron. And they're different ones. The one you get from Patreon is exclusive to Patreon. Like, just saying, dude. Just saying. Just putting that out there. And I know you're not going to let me get my hands on one of the patron exclusive ones without being a patron at that level. So I might have to do that. That's that's pretty badass. Just saying. 
Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. There you go. What time is it? Ken is all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! My arm looks huge when I do that, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I'm doing the white boy uh, fist bump. It looks like Popeye. <laughs> oh my gosh if you got for the audio listeners like uh yeah go watch the vod on uh twitch.tv somebody right, clip right, that or, right there dudes clip that or the youtube like uh oh my gosh man all right dude uh this this week we're gonna, we're just gonna play a um a game that we played uh a few months back it's not really a game it's more of a um uh uh uh, uh conversation starter kind of thing with some funny outcomes hopefully uh Maybe. where we've got we've got a site with a shitload of questions and a random number generator and we're going to take turns asking each other these questions and we're both going to uh, take a swing at answering them um, but i'm going to start by asking you question number 42 okay the, the the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. Uh, let's see. 42 is what two totally normal things become really weird if you do them back to back? What oh two normal, normally normal things totally normal things become really weird if you do them back to back? Um... Hmm. That's that's a that's a that's a good question. Um picking up dog poop and eating brownies. <laughs> weird. Um weird isn't the first adjective that comes to my mind when I think about that combo combination, but uh uh it's definitely weird. Um, something that was, something that was, so the, the adjective that did come to my mind was disgusting and gross and, you know, a bunch of similar things. But what that reminds me of is, uh, ninth grade biology. I had, I had that class right before lunch. It was like fourth period right before lunch. And we would often dissect things <laughs> in biology class. And I had to go. Directly from that experience to school to lunch, school lunch. <laughs> so there are quite a few times in ninth grade that I just didn't eat lunch. <laughs> yeah, uh, seems seems about right. Um, wow, yeah. All right, uh, let's see here. I'm going to ask you question number ten. What okay. is what is the funniest joke you know by heart? Oh, um, God, does it actually have to be funny? I, hmm. So I've got a lot of throwaway ones memorized that are just like right there in the clip. Hmm. Uh, things like um, uh, two guys walked into a bar, the third guy ducked. Okay. You know? Super, super throwaway. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to accuse that joke of being funny, <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, you know, a, ho a horse goes into a bar and the bartender says, "Why the long face?" You know, a bunch of like just throwaway things right there. Um, I don't know, man. Do you, do you have a good one memorized? Uh. Three brothers go to their dad. He's on his deathbed. This is also, also the first joke I ever memorized. Three oh, wow. brothers go to their dad. He's on his deathbed. He tells each of them, I want to leave one of you my fortunes. Whoever can make the most out of a small gift I give you now will earn my fortunes. Okay. They said, okay, dad, what's the gift? He gives each of them a duck. A living live duck. Okay, so the, the oldest brother goes out, 
Oh, geez. I think I know this joke, actually. Go ahead. Continue. Oldest brother goes out and uh, thinks of the simplest solution. He's just trying to get something done. He figures the other two are going to fail because they're fuck-ups anyway. You know, he's, <laughs> he's, he's the oldest. Like, he's always right, right? So he goes out and sells the duck for $10. Okay. So he comes back and tells Dad, hey, I, I got $10 for that shitty fucking duck. Dad's like, all right, cool. I mean, that's above market value. All right, cool. Um, second son goes out, and he's like, I got to do something better than $10. So he shops around a little bit more and finds the same store owner who runs a restaurant. And the guy's like, you know what? I My customers loved that duck. I need, an, I need another one. I'll give you $20 for that one. Okay. So he gives him $20, and uh, the middle son goes back and talks to dad. Hey, I got $20. Dad's like, oh, very well, very well, very well. Third son. Third son, he has no idea what to do. $20 is way too much for a single duck. He got the smallest duck. It's kind of cute. Nobody wants to chop it up and eat it. Okay, cool. So he starts heading around town, just wandering, trying to think aimlessly. You know, he's, he's just, he doesn't, he's not really paying attention where he's going. He ends up down a back alley. Mm-hmm. And there's a hooker uh, leaning off the side of the road, side side of the, uh, the 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 doorway, and she's like, "Hey, nice duck." And he's like, "Yeah, it's fucking worthless. I I can't get rid of it. I can't. The, the, what do I do with a duck?" She goes, <laughs> "She goes, well, I, I I've been needing a pet. Uh, what can I give you for uh for the duck?" And he's like, "Well, wh- what's it worth to you?" She's like, "I only deal in one currency." <laughs> right. So, so the youngest son goes in with the with the, the 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 hooker, and they they go around, and mm-hmm. she's saying, "Wow, uh, is this your first time?" I was like, "Yeah, it's my first time." Like I'm, you know, family guy. Uh, uh, never been out on my own, you know, not married or anything. Like I just live with my parents. She's like, "Okay, okay, okay." Well, let's go again. You're young. You can do that again, right? And he's like, yeah, sure. We can do that again. So they go again. Um, and she goes, well, since you did it the second time, why don't you take the duck and see who else you can, what else you can get for it? Because, like, I had my fun. Like, this is the best I've had in a while. So, you know, you can have the duck back. Like, I don't need it. He's like, all right, cool. So he's putting his pants back on. He goes and uh, looks at the duck, and the duck is walking out the door. Duck goes walking out the door. Big semi comes by. <laughs> smashes this right through the fucking duck. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Now I don't have shit. The truck driver gets out. He's like, man, I was speeding. If you don't say shit, I'll give you $25, man. Just just don't say <laughs> shit. I got to go. That's all I got in my wallet. I got to get out of here. Hops back in the truck yep. and heads out of there. <clears throat> Son goes back to his dad. No duck in his hand. He's got, you know, but dad, dad. You won't believe this story. He goes, okay, well, what did you get, son? He goes, well, I got a fuck for a duck, a duck for a fucking 25 bucks for a fucked up duck. Yep, I was typing the punchline into the chat. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that I've told you the joke before. Yeah, and I think um, I, I, I think you might have been the person that told this joke to me the first time um, back in like eighth grade or something. Yeah, probably. sounds about right. Because I, I think your grandpa did your grandpa tell you this joke? No, maybe? no, and definitely not my grandpa. It's way too vulgar for him. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> my stepdad's best friend, Mark. Mm. Okay, um, yeah, that's that's a good joke. Um, all right, so the uh, the next thing that I rolled is a three. So you are going to get, oh, God, this is a perfect question for you. Uh Uh-oh. What secret conspiracy would you like to start? Would I like to start? Yes. You get to to make one up yourself, and that's now what everyone's talking about. Now, it says conspiracy, not conspiracy theory, so it would be an actual conspiracy. Well, okay, you can take it whichever way. Either, I'm, I'm, either I'm, start an actual conspiracy. I'm going to take it literally, starting an actual okay. conspiracy. Uh, okay. The conspiracy that I would start, if I could start any, like the the one that I, uh, I would like to start a, a secret cabal of 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 of. What's the word? Contemporary constitutionalists. 
okay. to reshape and reform our government back into the actual intention of the founding fathers without all the racism and bigotry and sexism and shit like that. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's what I would do. Like that would be fucking rad. I'm already on the FBI list for it. I might as well say it on the air. <laughs> oh God. I I think if I was going to start an actual conspiracy, I think it would be completely badass to get like all of the world's richest people to get in on this conspiracy where the uh, so some people would have you believe that Santa Claus doesn't actually live at the North Pole and he doesn't have. Uh, you know, a, a massive toy shop and actually deliver presents to all the boys and girls throughout the world. Um, some people would have you believe that. Uh, so given that that's the climate, I I would, I, if I could start any conspiracy, it would be all the world's richest people to actually make that a real, actual thing where all the good boys and girls of the world actually get a a present or presents from Santa Claus every Christmas. That would be, uh, that'd be a pretty amazing thing. And I believe it's achievable. It just needs that conspiracy between all of the uh, rich people. I don't think it would work in my house because every year one child would get presents and one child wouldn't. <laughs> and it'd always be the same children. I'd have one child who's like, fuck Santa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I believe that, that, like, well, especially when we're talking about, like, small children, like, all children are good children. <laughs> you clearly haven't met all children in my house. <laughs> Just in my house. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> he's got a while in the chat even he's like uh <laughs> uh yeah uh my question for you others to oppose uh, my question for you is number seven what's the best wi-fi name you've ever seen oh my god I, well so I'm, I'm a fan of my my wi-fi name uh ravage eject I think is good, uh, but that's just because me. I'm a I'm a G1 Transformers nerd, and um, and Soundwave was was always my favorite dude, even though he's a Decepticon. When I would play with the toys, I would always imagine that he defected and became an Autobot because that's what you do. Similar to how I played with uh, the previously mentioned Star Wars action figure, he right. would never be on the bad guy side. Um, Which, I mean, technically, he wasn't. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 anyway. Yeah. 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 It's all point of view. Um. So is that is that your answer? Yeah, I'm I'm going with that because I can't think of anything that, like particularly clever. I'm gonna go with your mom's rotten pussy. Oh my god! Where did you see this? Good lord. I was at a friend's house. I went to hook up to their Wi-Fi, and that was one of the Wi-Fi's in in the list. Your mom's rotten pussy. Jesus. And and Deuce Gone Wild says he always sees a CIA van. FBI. And, and and yes, it was unprotected. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, but who's gonna jump on that? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, I knew your mom too well to make that joke, but yeah, that's. <laughs> and I wasn't even thinking about your mom. I was thinking just the abstract of like your mom, you know, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. All right. Let's do one more round each here. Um, I got 29. Okay, Amos, what inanimate object do you wish you could eliminate from existence? Oh, my God. What inanimate object do you wish you could eliminate from existence? What inanimate object do I think, I, do I wish I could? Oh, that's, that's 
Um, I'll I tell guess, you, when, when I was a master sergeant, I think I probably would have said EPRs. Right. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> I. <laughs> I'm going to go a little more more general than that and say all uh not all subjective appraisals. Subjective appraisals. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so which is basically so, what an so, EPR is, right? So not it's the, an enlisted performance report. So this right. is this is very much an Air Force enlisted uh annual appraisal. Yeah. I mean the other services have equivalents. You know, sure. roll rough equivalents. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think most industries you you get an annual appraisal or something similar to right. that. Right. But we're uh, talking about the subjectivity part. The uh, I'm okay with the PT test. It's objective. Like you either passed or you failed. There's no It mm. doesn't matter what Joe's opinion of you is or how well they test you. Yeah, but if you can run a 9-minute, you know, mile and a half, then well, you just ran a 9-minute mile and a half. Right. There's nothing I can do about it. You you might be an asshole. But I can't dock you points right. because you did, in fact, run that nine-minute mile and a half. I, I, I can't dock you points because you you looked at my wife weird and she winked back at you. Like, subjective <laughs> appraisals are such bullshit. I, I fucking hate them. So I would say subjective appraisals. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're on the same page with that. Yep. Uh, animate uh, objects. Sure. Like, living things, what would you eliminate? Oh, um, living things? Yes. Probably geese. Probably geese. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, okay. All right. Well, actually, you know what? You know what? In like for reals, for reals, yeah. probably mosquitoes. Yes. Probably mosquitoes. Yes. Mosquitoes. Scientifically um, proven to not fucking matter to ecology. Mosquitoes. Yeah. All they do is spread disease and misery. Yes. Necessarily oh. in that for precedence, but uh, yes. Well, they, they go hand in hand, though. Like part of the misery is the fact that you can catch a disease. And, and uncontrollable itching of the spot in between your your nostril and your eyeball, like that's a fucking disease. They should cl- they should classify that as a disease. <laughs> yeah, I usually get them like on the elbow. It'll yeah, be, like right on the elbow where I get bit. It's it 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 either matters. Uh, it's well, it's always a body part you were either constantly touching or constantly moving. And I know there's some perceptive yeah, yeah. bias there because uh, obviously, <laughs> like you don't notice a mosquito in your shoulder blade because you never fucking you don't look at it, you don't you're not touching it, you know. But yeah, it's on your elbow, it's on your face. Like you go to talk and you can feel it itch because it's right goddamn there, you know. <laughs> yeah. Which also, how do you miss a mosquito on your fucking cheek? I don't know, but it happens. Like <laughs> sons of bitches. Yeah, mosquitoes all the way, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I don't like geese. Like uh, geese um, are are assholes in nature. They're like nature's asshole. But um, yeah, they do not hold a candle to mosquitoes in being terrible. Like um, mosquitoes, I mean, just the. The number of people that have died from mosquito-related issues. Yep. Like, yep. Think the throughout worst. throughout history, all the people that have ever died of malaria, fucking mosquitoes. Yep. Just mosquitoes. Fuck mosquitoes. All right. Fuck. <clears throat> I I rolled a number fifty-nine. What would you? What would some fairy tales be like if they took place in the present and included modern technology and culture? God damn, that's like a four-part essay right here. That really is. That really I mean, is. Just, just okay. the question had to be broken up by like 15 punctuation marks. Modern technology and culture. Um, for, so isn't there like entire television series that are that are based on this? Yeah. I don't watch um, them either. But I haven't watched any of them, so I don't know. Um, all right. So fairy tale. Just so some people tale. out there are going to know immediately if we're wrong. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, so um, uh, Snow White is the first thing that comes to my mind. Okay, um, how would Snow White be different if modern technology was in was in culture were included? Okay, so first of all, she wouldn't have gotten lost in the woods because um, she would have GPS on her cell phone, so like the story wouldn't even happen, right? Right. Um, but like the culture aspect, like let's say that she did, like her phone was broken or she forgot her phone or whatever, right? So she's in the woods, and then she gets found by um a house full of little people 
uh, they came home from work, right? And um, she treated them like her servants because they were little people. That would not fucking fly in a modern culture. You have seven middle to older, middle aged to older men living together in a hovel in the woods. <laughs> They're coming home and they see her. She's not making it out alive. Well, okay, all right. That's I don't. Uh, I don't even care that they're little people. Like seven middle-aged white dudes <laughs> are living together in a fucking hovel in the woods. They're serial killers. Like or something like like I'm thinking of like um, the hills have eyes or let's just say uh, she's staying for dinner. Mad- all right. Yeah, this is not. She's yeah, this, the main course. Either way, this is not ending well for no. Snow White. No, don't go in the woods with this dead cell phone, dumb bitch. <laughs> God, I'm getting all pissed off at her for for not being responsible with her technology. Oh, jeez. All right, I think that's I think that's a good place to and, end. And the dwarves I already think they're assholes, so that's not even a big thing. Like it's whatever. Hi ho. Uh, look, they were singing hi ho like first of all <laughs> they were welcoming her to the I, I know I know like they were welcoming her with a fucking shitty R&B song like an acapella R&B song man that was not like twinkles in the woods and shit that was like the, like the seventh dwarf the guy in the back was like <laughs> you know oh god no <laughs> No, oh my fairy God. tales don't don't no. You you can't put a fairy tale in 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 front of me with my cynical ass mind, and not get bad results if I start including modern technology and culture. Like everything ends up poorly. Na- wow. Name another one so I can have my go. Um. Okay, Cinderella. Oh my God. <laughs> It's like, like she loses her glass slipper at the ball. You don't even get there, man. As soon as the stepmom starts being a bitch to her, like child services gets called by yep, the yep. neighbors who heard some shit one time and trying to button in everybody's business. And then once they get there, they see that it's completely hellacious. They hid her away like she didn't even like they'd be like, where's the, where's the chick we brought you? Like. Oh no! Like that just and then she then she sneaks out. Okay, cool. Breaking curfew, no big deal. She goes to the ball. She loses a, a shoe, and the prince finds it. Right, and what's he do? He keeps it. You know that dude's on Pornhub sniffing it. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh! No. Okay. All right, all right, all right. That's a good place to end that. And um, now I can't do bedtime stories with, with all the things. I I want to I want to hear before we wrap up. I want to hear about uh, your take on uh, we're we're kind of going retro here in ritual misery, uh, uh, Lord ritual misery. Um, um, uh, we're going R and P classic. Yeah, we're going classic here. Do you do you have the stinger by chance? Maybe? Um. No. Okay. I, I well, should have. Well, too bad. Uh, yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about a TED Talk, uh, specifically a TEDx talk. Uh, but you you enjoy this one quite a bit and wanted to, wanted to talk about it a little bit. Could you tell us? Um... Okay. So this is called the Super Mario Effect, Super Mario Effect, Tricking Your Brain into Learning More by Mark Rober. Do you know who Mark yep. Rober is? Um, right, have you been made with aware a, with a YouTube channel where he um, he takes like scientific concepts and uh, you, you, makes you like, just heard that you, you saw uh, that on the video, project. dude. You saw that in the video, like. Yep, that's all I know about. Oh him. my god! So you, you've never seen like squirrel, uh, squirrel, uh, 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 this the squirrel trapeze. Um, uh, not the trapeze, the obstacle course, the squirrel obstacle course. Um, probably. It's one of the best sounds, fucking videos yeah. ever. 
the squirrels had to learn how to go through an obstacle course to get to the uh, to the seeds that they kept stealing from his backyard. Mm. Anyway, he's done all kinds of cool shit. He's a NASA mm. engineer guy by trade. Does his YouTube stuff on the side. Yeah, and just a ridiculously smart guy. Yeah, the Super Mario effect is essentially. I'm just going to sum it up real quick. If you aren't given penalties. Well, uh, if the average person isn't penalized for wrong answers, they tend to give more attempts at getting things right and have better success in those attempts than people who are punished for doing the wrong thing, for answering the wrong question or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what it comes down to. And it's a matter of not giving up on life and pushing forward, which is funny because this week's been kind of funk and... I'm watching YouTube videos like this because they just happen to pop up. Like YouTube knows too much. Oh, dude! Right? Google, Amazon, all right. Facebook. So, so what, what was your take on this, man? Did this did this jive with you? Did this make a, a no? Sense? Absolutely. This, this this talk completely resonates. Um, th- this reminds me actually of uh, the way that I approached expediting uh, when I was on the flight line at Kunsan. Uh, because I'd expedited a little bit in the past, but like, not really, right? Like right. it was mostly like on on drones and shit like that. Uh, but when you're in the middle of a of a, a pen X, uh, you know, a, a peninsula exercise at Kunsan Air Base, um, and you need to generate, you know, 20 aircraft right fucking now uh, to simulate taking the fight north and blah 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 blah. Um, that is, that's the trial by fire, right? And that's kind of, I got kind of tossed into the fire with that. And, uh, it was super stressful. Like I knew the basics, I knew the mechanics of what I needed to get done, right? You've got your, your clipboard with your tasks and here you go. Um, but it's obviously, it's not that simple or literally anyone can do it, or you wouldn't even need somebody to do that job. Right. There's, there's a lot of judgment calls that you have to make. And, yeah. and 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 understanding the system that you have to have in order to make those calls correctly. Absolutely. And the first time I did it, I was super intimidated, and I made quite a few. Well, I don't. I mean, not quite a few mistakes. I, I made several mistakes, right? And I felt really bad about the mistakes that I made. Um, but uh, I had uh, I had a senior NCO talk to me about how. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, a, you know, don't take it as hard as you did the learn from what you did wrong and do better the next time. And that's, you know, that's all we can ask. Um, think about your successes more than you think about your failures. Right. So I kind of took that pep talk to heart. Right. So the next exercise, which is like fucking, like, it felt like it was immediately after that, <laughs> it was probably like a month later. Um, like I did much better. And I started to think about expediting in general at, differently i started right. to think of it in the terms of because i was at the time i was really into rts games real-time strategy so things like command and conquer starcraft warcraft not world of warcraft warcraft right um um, um was was the uh, lord of the rings one i can't think what it's called now but i was super into that game um anyway so i started to look at expediting uh the same way and it was a it was totally a game to me and it became just a thing like and i continued to get better at it and i wasn't discouraged anymore if i if i did something wrong i'm like well fuck all right i'll perfect that for next week so next week i'll have a perfectly run you know 2434 2430 like all right. of my documents would be just freaking perfect next time and w- it wasn't until i thought of it as a game did I stop worrying about it and like continue to get better and better and better at it? So this, this talk resonated with me. I went the opposite direction. I'd never expedited, never, ever. I'd ridden with some expediters before, but typically I was doing other things while they were expediting. You know, I was there as a, basically, I, anyway, um, I'd never expedited before. And then they threw me out as pro super at, for weekend duty Oh wow! Um, yeah, so it's and it's like the guy that's in charge of the expediters, right? Um, so I, I mean, I knew their job, but I didn't. I'd never done it, and then did that a couple times, and no, no big deal. I mean, it's weekend duty, right? So it's like you had one thing to accomplish, like make make sure fuel shop doesn't go home until the fucking jet's done. Um, yeah, right. uh, 
<clears throat> then I go to Osan and they had me sell boss. Oh God, which is which is pro super basically On, for for four aircraft. Yes, but this is but this is that Pinex stuff. Right? Yes, this is pressures on. This is real world. Well, real world simulation right. in Korea. Yeah. Oh, d did we mention that, that you're wearing Kim gear the entire time during these exercises? Right. We didn't mention that. Right. But... Um, <laughs> they uh, they basically said, well, you've been a weekend pro super, so you know most of that, and you've ridden around with Expeditor, so you should be good to go. We don't need to give you anybody to teach you how to do this. Mm. First day on the job, lost tool. Oh, God. And for those that don't know, a lost tool on the flight line stops everything. Here's the, the thing, though. I was the superintendent in charge of support. Mm -hmm. My guys brought me a tool that didn't that was missing a part. I knew they were missing the part, told them they were missing a part, told them to go get me the part. They came back. 30 minutes later, still didn't have the part. Mm. Mm. I radioed out that we were missing this part and it's probably at this hangar. They mm. radioed back. They didn't have it. I told my guys, because at that time, I'm not in charge of my guys. I'm in charge of my cell. My mm. tech sergeants are in charge of the shop. I told right. them, send someone to go find this part right now. They failed to do that. At the same Ooh. time that I had ammo load on two of my 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 aircraft. So I'm jumping mm. between two separate buildings to keep track of that and report those numbers in. Because we'd already had our PP smack for not reporting numbers fast enough. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bane of the cell boss. So yeah. when we go to go home and my guys are driving around, they go home an hour before I do. We're all on 12-hour shifts, but they're offset a little bit. And they can't go home because they lost the, that part. I completely lost track of it. I saw my guys finishing the job, which mean, meant they had the part they needed, not knowing that they had gone to the next one over and gotten that part from over there because it, it was a locks, a locks kit. Oh, geez. Okay. A li mm -hmm. liquid, ox liquid oxygen servicing kit. They had gone next door and gotten the servicing tube from there and borrowed theirs and then taken and gotten it, given it back. When they told me the job was done, I made the assumption, well, then they, my guys brought the part back and blah, 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 blah. Four, oh, geez. Okay. Four hours mm -hmm. later, come to find out that part was never found. My guys told me they had gotten the part from our supply guy or our uh, support guys. So you came and brought us the part and then took it and now it's missing again? Anyway, that was my first day pro souping officially as a cell boss working a 19 hour day because I had a lost tool report in which I got oh. an LOR because it was my section that lost the tool and I didn't adequately keep track of what was going on. After that, One time. my cell was the cell you wanted to be in. Because I gave zero shits. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you did kind of take that the opposite. The yeah. Opposite no. It, yeah. My, yeah, I didn't care. My jets were rolling late. Didn't care. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Fire me? I'm over 20. I, get, I give a shit. And they did eventually fire wow. me from that job. Yeah. Uh, because something else. I did one thing that was completely fucking, fucking unforgivable. unforgivable. Two other things that other people did that I was even, wasn't even aware of, and when I brought it to light that someone had done it, they held me accountable for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I fucking hated Osan. Fuck all those people. <laughs> yeah. And by um, all those people, I mean all the people that were in charge at that time. I don't mean everybody that I was there with, because some of those people were pretty yeah. fucking amazing. Yeah, but also uh, uh, Kunsan is better than Osan. Oh, <sighs> Yeah. 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 Leaps and downs. <sighs> Leaps and downs. Yeah, yeah, you you've actually been stationed at both of them. Yes. So you can uh, I went to Osan yeah. expecting it to be a more relaxed Kunsan and found it more high pressure, less rewarding, and just, just fucking boring, boring with, with no, no camaraderie. camaraderie. 
exactly the opposite, opposite of Kunsan. Kunsan. Yeah. 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 Kunsan, Kunsan was like, yeah, uh, we'll get it done, we'll get it done, but we're going to fucking fight. And Ozan was like, you get it, get it done now. No, we're not going anywhere. Right. Fuck Ozan. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to fight, fight in place. place. Anyway, anyway um, <laughs> military, military stuff aside, aside like, I, I think, think anybody would get benefit from this video. video. Yeah. Super Mario, Mario effect. Uh, uh, look it up. It's a TEDx uh, thing. If, if you've, you've got, got the, the TED, TED, like the TED, TED Talk, Talk app, app like, I'm, I'm sure you can find it on there. But it's definitely available on YouTube. The Super Mario effect, tricking your brain into learning more by Mark Ruber. Uh, really, really, really good, good. and he's, he's a, a he's a really, really engaging, engaging speaker as well. And his presentation is just very nice. Uh, but, but what he has to say is actually very valuable. And, and if, if you've, you've not already encountered, encountered this mentality in the past, this is probably going to be an eye-opening thing that you can hopefully apply to your own life to make tasks um, easier to learn, easier to excel at, and so forth. Um, and it's only like a ten-minute video, so. Um, or, or no, no, it's, it's a little, little bit longer than that. But it's, it's less than 20 minutes, minutes for, for sure. sure. Yeah, for sure. It's really good. Um, yeah, yeah richmondmisery.com slash swag or support slash swag. Or just, just, any, just, just go to richmondmisery.com, find the swag thing. And I, I think all the different ways will take you to the same page. That's how I have it set up. Hopefully it works. Um, yeah, it, it works. It works amazingly. amazingly. And, and if you, you go, go check it out now, now you will see stuff about uh, the New Year's Eve streamathon, which, which is coming up in just a few beer weeks. It's gonna be awesome. Did you say just a few beer weeks? A few beer weeks, but um, yeah, a few beers a week will get you there faster. <laughs> Fair enough. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Where can people find you? <sighs> RM, RM underscore Delnote on Twitter. On Twitter. That's, That's it. it. All right. All right. Uh, you, you can find, find me. Actually, actually, you know what? what? Find me at anthonylemos.com. Yes. yes. If you like good photography, if you want to see some really cool shit, shit especially, especially of Alaska, Alaska. yes, yes. anthonylemos.com. How do you spell that, that, by the way? A N T H O N Y L E M O S. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to go with that, but it's like, nope. No, nope, nope, you, you did, did it. it. Link, Link in the, in the show, show notes. notes. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Oh, yeah. And uh, join, join the conversation, conversation on Discord, Discord bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Yeah, I've been yeah, mission earlier, but seriously, guys, go to ritualmisery.com for all the links to all the cool stuff that we've got going on. And, of course, we're live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so much to Kevin Cloud for allowing us to use your music. And thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you. Yeah. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya! Hope you have enjoyed this program. All right, uh, one of our patrons just got a second shout out on a month where he was no longer supporting us at the appropriate level. So hopefully that makes up for some of the times where he wasn't on there because I didn't see his pledges when I last time I edited the thing. <laughs> Hey, hey, like like we say at work when it comes to our time cards. It all comes out in the wash. <laughs> yep. Life is a zero sum game. Mm. Enjoy it while you can. <laughs>